Hi, I'm Chef Kelly York and this is Therapeutic Cuisine. I specialize in creating recipes that use natural and medicinal ingredients to target and alleviate varying human health conditions. Today we're going to focus on prediabetes. Prediabetes is something that not many people talk about because we do have so many diabetics in this country, but we even have more prediabetics. I've heard a statistic that by the year 2020, there's going to be one in two adults are gonna have prediabetes. Right now, there's 86 million Americans in this country that have that condition. If you have normal blood sugar levels, your levels will be at 5.6 or below. If it's 5.6 to 6.4, you are prediabetic. And if it's 6.5 or higher, you're diabetic. You can ask your doctor to have that test done. It's an A1C, hemoglobin A1C test. It actually tests your blood glucose levels at a non-fasting um, amount. So it tells you what your readings have been for about the last three months rather than just the 12 hours before you went and had your blood drawn. So again, if you think that you have prediabetes or it runs in your family, that might be something you want to ask your doctor to run a test on for you. I'm going to start out today by making a recipe that's very low on the glycemic level. That means that it's a 10 or lower and it's a blueberry and barley bread bar. Barley is wonderful for keeping your blood from spiking after you eat um, carbohydrates. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a chia seed and flax seed and blueberry juice soak. What's gonna happen is my chia seeds are going to start to gelatinize up and this will turn into oh the thickness of a syrup in about five minutes so i'm going to give that a stir and the flax seed are ground um, flax seeds are a wonderful uh, seed that has ala in it so it's a type of omega-3 fatty acid that's plant-based okay so i'm going to let that sit for about five minutes and it'll get more like the consistency of a, of a thin syrup Meanwhile, I'm going to take my dry ingredients and I'm going to use my bowl to combine them. And so I'm going to put some barley flakes. Now, rolled barley flakes look like um, oats, kind of, but it's a barley and it's the whole grain and it's just rolled nice and flat, but all parts of the grain are there. So you're getting all those wonderful fibers and uh, it's a wonderful grain that has a little bit of chew and earthiness to it when we get it in the bread and it's finished being baked. To that, I'm gonna add my flours. I'm adding some barley flour now. So the barley is actually ground up a little bit finer here into a flour and some whole wheat pastry flour. Another source of fiber and magnesium. I also add, of course, I need a leavener. So we're gonna add some baking powder. And then we flavor our dry with some cinnamon. Cinnamon is wonderful for diabetics to eat. Um, if you take like a quarter of a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon a day, it actually drops down your glucose levels by like 30%, something crazy like that. And then we're gonna add some uh, ginger. Ginger is very anti-inflammatory. It's also very delicious. It's one of my favorite spices. And then a little bit of salt and that's gonna help um, bring up the flavors and also it helps with the baking powder a little bit too. I then take some dried wild blueberries and I'm gonna stir that into my flour because it actually helps to get the berries coated with the flour. When you add the liquids then and you bake your, your batter, they're not gonna sink to the bottom of your bread. Now, if you don't wanna use dried, dried are very concentrated with the sugar. So it's very important that you stick to the recipe that has been developed to have the glucose levels right where they are. If you use more of those blueberries, you're going to be pushing that 
that, that rating. You could also go to fresh blueberries though, and then you could put maybe a whole cup in because the fresh blueberries aren't concentrated uh, sugars as much. When you, when you dry the blueberries, you get a more concentrated, less liquid and more of the sugar concentrated per berry. So I'm gonna take my wet and add it to the dry. Now you're gonna see this beautiful color of this bread. Now this bread, notice, has no extra sugar added. Only sugar is the sweetness from the blueberries and the blueberry juice. Now blueberry juice you can buy in most grocery stores, but you want to get the 100% juice, not one of those um, juice cocktails that have all that sugar added. Okay, now that my batter is all blended, I'm going to go ahead and put that into a baking pan. And I usually recommend an 8x8 or an 8x10 size pan. I line that with foil, either the nonstick kind, but if you're using regular foil, then spray it with some kind of a nonstick spray. And then that makes it really easy after they're baked. And then I'm just going to spread it out in the pan. Make it nice and even. This is not going to uh, rise a whole lot. Now this bread is, again, not very sweet. And so it makes a wonderful accompaniment to, say, wild game like pheasant or quail or some wild boar or elk and um, buffalo. You can also pair it with say a vegetarian vegetable stew. Um, kind of serve it like a cornbread. So I've got this nice and smoothed out and now I'm going to sprinkle some walnuts on top. And walnuts are a wonderful uh, nut for topping blueberry barley bread. They have a good source of omega-3s and they're rich with fiber. They're also just delicious and buttery. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the oven and cook it for about 30 minutes. Clean up my table here a little bit and we'll come back and make the next recipe. My blueberry bread is in the oven, and we're gonna go ahead and get started on the next recipe, which is a spicy mukamame bean snack. I start out by taking the mukamame, which is those shelled soybeans, um, the edamame without the shell on it, into a bowl, and I'm going to toss that with some red palm oil and some salt. I'm going to go ahead and give that a little toss so that we get the salt evenly over the beans. And then I'm going to stick it on a sheet pan. I like to pre-line it with some foil so it makes for an easier cleanup. We're going to pop these in the oven and cook them until they get crisp. Before I do that, I'm going to come over here and make another recipe, which is a pumpkin-filled almond meal crepe. First thing I'm going to do is make the batter. And that entails taking some almond meal and some whole wheat flour, some melted butter, and some egg product. You can use egg whites or whole eggs or uh, no cholesterol liquid eggs. I'm going to go give that a nice blend. And finally, you add a little milk to this. And actually, you can even use whole milk because it has palmitic oleic acid in it. And that's actually been shown to help lower diabetes by like up to 62% when it's um, prevalent in the blood. And you know, you have to have like three or four servings a day to get up to that protective level. But that's about it. If you have more than that, that's just too much saturated fat. So go figure. We're gonna give this a little bit more of a really good blend and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick my edamame or mukamami into the oven and this batter is gonna rest for about half an hour in the refrigerator. 
Now that the mukamami is in the oven baking, I'm gonna go ahead and start making the filling for the crepes. It's a pumpkin filling, so I'm gonna start out with some pumpkin puree. And pumpkin is full of beta carotene, and there's studies that show it can actually help regenerate cells in the pancreas. So it's really pretty, pretty cool stuff. I'm then gonna add some ricotta cheese, and it's a whole fat ricotta. Some maple syrup, which is one of my favorite sweeteners as far as sweeteners are concerned. That gets seasoned with some cinnamon, and cinnamon is so great for diabetes. I said earlier that if you have, say, a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon before a meal, it can lower your insulin levels by up to 30%. Then a little bit of ginger. Some almond extract or vanilla, either one, whatever your preference is and a little bit of salt. Finally, we're gonna add a little bit of egg whites, just so that when this cooks, it'll tighten up a little bit more and be a little lighter. Give it some body. Give that a nice blend. And then I'm gonna let that rest a little bit as I make some crepes. Now that batter was chilled, so it had a chance to rest. And the way that I like to start out is to get my pan a little hot first before I add some, a little bit of butter or a little bit of oil. Depending on how seasoned your pan is, if it's really uh, well seasoned, you might not have to use any at all. And it's usually a fourth a cup of batter. That's about the right size for a six inch um, saute pan. Pour the batter in and we're gonna swirl the pan and start creating a film on the bottom. If you pour a little liberally into the pan, you might want to swirl higher up the walls. When that starts to stick, just keep it on the fire until the outer edges start to peel away. So you wanna cook that bottom kinda of gently. You can, you can pull off the heat if it's starting to bubble up too fast. You wanna have the surface dry. Now I like to take a little rubber spatula to start peeling the edge off. You can see it's starting to peel away from the edges of the wall. We need to be a little bit drier in the center there. Now you can make crepes and put them in the freezer so that when you want to make a blintz or a crepe suzettes or something that you just want to fill in with the crepe, you can remove them from the freezer, defrost them and away you go. The authentic recipes for all of our products are signature to La Morena. The chilies are literally hand-picked for each can. Everything is manufactured in Mexico and imported into the U.S. La Morena is best known for its quality and authentic flavor, giving our users a taste of home. Stock up on flavor with La Morena. Okay, my makamemi has been in the oven for 30 minutes. It started to brown, they're getting crisp. So I've removed it from the oven and now I'm gonna go ahead and add the seasoning. What I'd like to do is to just put that into a bowl. And this makes a wonderful snack. High in protein. And I'm going to sprinkle some seasoning on. And what I use is a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of pomegranate powder. And what that is, is it's freeze-dried pomegranates that have been ground up into a powder. So it has a tart, sweet flavor to it. And then a little cayenne pepper. 
go ahead and give that a stir while it's still warm and those seasonings will coat each bean. And then I'm going to pour it back onto the cookie sheet and let them cool. Oh, does that smell good. Just a little bit of zip from the cayenne, some tart from the pomegranate. Pomegranate is very beneficial from keeping your glucose spikes from swinging up and down. Next, I'm going to show you the crepes and how we're going to fill them. We have our pumpkin filling. I've made three here ahead of time. Let's go ahead and put another one together. You take about, oh, an eighth of a cup to a fourth of a cup of filling, stick that in the middle, and we just fold it up like a little purse. So I'm going to bring in the outside edges and then the other two sides and then fold it under. Once those are folded, I'm going to take them and put them in a saute pan. I put a little tiny bit of butter in there. You can use um, olive oil or actually I would, olive oil actually would taste good with the pumpkin, but maybe the almond oil because that's also part of the filling. So into the pan they go. I use the folded side on the bottom so that I can kind of set them up, set them tightly closed, and then we'll flip them. It'll take a minute here for the heat to come up. Oh, I can smell that cinnamon. Now these go very good with all kinds of meals. You can serve them at breakfast time with a little bit of Greek yogurt plopped on the top and maybe a sprinkling of nutmeg. Um, I've served them as a side dish on um, grilled chicken plates. Uh, you can put all kinds of other, like a fruit puree topping over it. Um, this is wonderful in the fall. Two are often served for each serving because they're pretty big. And you could maybe serve them with eggs and sauteed spinach would be wonderful. Starting to crackle now. I'm getting that smell even more definite here. Doesn't take very long, but you want the heat to get all the way through to the middle to cook that egg white a little bit that's in the filling. Helps make the filling nice and light. Just a hint of the ricotta cheese. All right, let's give these a flip now. Nice and golden brown on the bottom. Give them a little light color on the top and they'll be ready to serve. I'm going to go ahead and move my bowl here. Just a light coloring on the top is all you need. And again, I would serve that with some plain yogurt and a little bit of nutmeg sprinkled on the top. And now for our blueberry bread, we're going to remove that by taking the foil out. And then we can just give it a quick flip or just slide it off even. So there you have it, our three pre-diabetes recipes. We started out with makamemi beans that are made for snacking. And these are wonderful for taking on the run, sticking them in a maybe a Ziploc bag, and you could take them to work or have them in your car when you just need something to keep your uh, glycemic level steady and even. Our 
pumpkin filled crepes made with almond meal and pumpkin and ricotta cheese, cinnamon. Um, cover that with some nice full fat yogurt and a sprinkling of nutmeg. And there you have it, the blueberry barley bars. All three recipes great for pre-diabetes or diabetic diets. I'm Chef Kelly York and this is Therapeutic Cuisine. And as the father of medicine Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. Hope to see you again soon.